So there's a new study out today that says that antibiotic resistance and global warming may be linked. I thought that was pretty interesting because the global warming issue is a big, big topic right now. And also at the same time, we have antibiotic resistance that is also a big topic. The news report that came out was by Darren McFadden of the uh, Boston uh, Children's Hospital. I'll leave a link down at the bottom, but this sort of makes sense if you think about it. Um, and, and we can get into the, the issues of what's causing global warming and, and all of that, but the bigger issue as a nurse and in a healthcare setting, and especially dealing with infectious diseases and whatnot, one of the things that you're going to have to be really, really uh, paying attention to is the global warming I'm not sorry, I'm sorry, not global warming, the antibiotic resistance uh, aspect of your nursing care. Um, it's a big issue. Uh, you're going to see that the CDC is really, really pushing this about uh, antibiotic resistance. The problem with antibiotic resistance, though, is, is this. The physicians have an, have an issue. If they, if they have somebody that comes in with, let's say, a urinary tract infection, they have this patient in and, and, they, and they do lab results. They pull labs, uh, pull a urine culture. Urine culture comes back and uh, you have a patient that has some trace bacteria. Well, if that physician doesn't treat that patient, then they can get in trouble, even though it's, it's, it's trace bacteria. So that, that physician is, is obligated in a way to make sure that they treat that patient. That physician is obligated, uh, otherwise he'll get in trouble. So, you know, the CDC has these rules about antibiotic resistance and, and this antimicrobial resistance uh, issue is so huge at the CDC. The problem is, is that they don't have a way to, uh, they don't have a way to really combat it. They have recommendations because at the end of the day, it's up to the physician to treat the patient. It's up to the physician. They have discretion and autonomy on who they treat, what they treat, and, and what they prescribe. They have, the CDC has recommendations, but at the end of the day, when it comes to antibiotic resistance, uh, the, you know, the, 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 the physician is the, is, makes the final call. Um, I went to a conference in Atlanta about a year and a half ago uh, on this specific, specific topic. And I was at, the, it was at Emory University and um, the, we had the head of the CDC there, we had the, the, the head person at the CDC, and they had this whole program about how they want to combat antimicrobial resistance. So I thought it was an interesting thing, you know, this, this new study that came out talking about global warming and anti antibiotic resistance. Uh, it, it's going to be an issue, guys, coming up in the future. You know, I don't know if global warming is actually the cause of it, but, it, but if you think about it, you know, warmer temperatures in general lead to, to more bacterial growth. So if you have stronger bacteria, more bacteria, they're going to become a little more resistant to the... Uh, to the antibiotics being used, especially if we're over prescribing as well. So if we're over prescribing antibiotics and then we have, you know, warmer temp temperatures in general, uh, there, there, that could possibly be a connection. Now there, there needs to be more studies. So don't jump to any conclusions on this, but I thought it was a very interesting study and, and you guys being nurses are going to be pushing antibiotics all the time, you know, and one of the hardest things that the CDC has, has to combat is, is antimicrobial resistance. So guys, as you're in the, you know, you're in the field, you're treating patients, you know, you need to always constantly be looking at lab work, looking at, uh, looking at cultures and even helping because sometimes physicians, I mean, at the end of the day, they're going to do what they got to do. But as, as you become a nurse and you become well-versed in nursing, uh, especially you guys on the med search floor, you're going to need to, uh, talk to these, uh, physicians and, and, and make sure that they're, you know, they even know it, that it's in the back of their mind. You know, you can, you can, uh, respectfully request a stoppage of antibiotics. Doesn't mean they're going to do it. Um, you need to do that in a respectful way, obviously, when you're talking to physicians as a nurse. Um, but yeah, so guys, you know, th this is some pretty interesting, uh, interesting studies coming up. I don't know how much link, how much link it is or, or what the, what the final, uh, I, th I think there's going to be more studies what I'm trying to say. There's going to be a lot more studies on this, but you guys that are in the nursing field need to pay attention to these studies. You need to pay attention to uh, what's going on, to antimicrobial resistance, to uh, catheter-related infections. You know, you, the, the two main things that if, if I was a nurse on med surge, or if I was a nurse in any type of long-term care, the, the main two things I would watch out for is the antibiotic usage and catheter usage. And, and as a nurse, you can request the, uh, 
the stoppage of a catheter. You, you can even request, you can stop it after a certain amount of days. There are protocols in place for that. And each, uh, each facility has their own, uh, their own protocols and their own policies on that, but you need to need to become familiar with that. So, uh, so anyways, guys, I thought this was a pretty interesting piece of uh, nursing news for you guys. Um, I uh, just want to let you know what's out there. I'll leave a link at the bottom. Other than that, that's all. See you guys later.